everyone! In today's video, I'm just going to be going through how you might like to structure a designing your own study question. These questions are typically worth 12 marks because they test various areas of your research methods knowledge. The question I'm going to be going through is from the 2017 paper, so you may have come across it before. However, hopefully you will find that the content within this video is generalizable to other questions of this type. So this first point may sound obvious, but actually, before you start to answer the question, you need to make sure you pick out the key words so you know exactly what the examiner is looking for within your answer. And quite a lot of people, including myself at times, don't do this. And that's where easy marks are lost because you begin to answer the wrong question. For example, this question here is asking for you to design an observational study and not all questions are going to ask for this. So you know that the techniques that you're going to be describing are going to be specific to an observation. You're then given a set of points which you need to base your answer around. So these points are here to help you. You only need to answer these points. It's surprising how many people veer off topic and talk about ethics, for example, when nowhere here does it say that you need to talk about ethics. I would also recommend doing a paragraph per point. You can even label these paragraphs if you want to, to make it completely obvious to the examiner what you're doing. And then I'd also answer the points in order, because not only does it make it clear to the examiner, but it makes it clear to you and you know exactly what you've already done. First of all, this question is asking what type of observation you'd like to go for. You may want to go for a covert or overt observation, maybe even a naturalistic observation. It's up to you, whatever you decide. But the key part here is to make sure you justify why. If you don't say why, you're not going to get all of the marks. For example, if you went with a covert observation, your justification for this may be that it would allow for the experimenters to observe the behaviour of those using the gym without them knowing that they are being watched. Therefore, their behaviour is likely to be more natural than if they knew that they were being watched. Next, you're asked to create a set of operationalised behavioural categories. The key word here is operationalised. This means that you must fully explain each category. For example, you may choose to measure how long someone spends running on the treadmill. To operationalise this, you would state the level of measurement used. So the behavioural category would become how long, in minutes, someone spends running on the treadmill. For this bullet point, you should aim for a minimum of two fully operationalised variables, though I personally would give three to be on the safe side. You can answer this part just in bullet points also, obviously still using full sentences. Next, you are asked to use time or event sampling with justification. Time sampling is where you choose a set amount of time, for example, five minutes, and record how often a behavior occurs within this interval. Event sampling is where the researcher chooses in advance what type of behavior they are going to observe, and then they mark down, usually as a tally, how often these behaviors are seen. Behaviors that were not originally noted down are ignored. You could go with either of these in this case, as long as you justify your decision. You should also give examples in either case. For example, the amount of time within an interval, so 5 minutes, or the types of behaviours that would be observed, which are most likely your behavioural categories from before. Finally, you are asked how the reliability of your data can be assessed. This will include points from what you have already written. For this, you want to give an example of inter-rated reliability. For example, if your research method involved recording those at the gym, you could have another researcher review the recording and see if they have agree with what you have found. For example, if you used event sampling, you would look to see if similar categories are identified and if the number of tallies indicating how many times these occurred match those that you found beforehand. As long as your final point ties in everything that you've already written, you'll be good to go. For these types of questions, it is important to remember that you can structure it as each point being a separate heading, just so you know what you've done. You can also, if you're asked to identify things such as behavioural categories, write these as bullet points, as long as you still include full sentences. I wouldn't recommend using bullet points for anything else besides those that you do as a list, because otherwise it won't flow as nicely, and you're less likely to get full marks. Also, it's important to note that you must answer all the bullet points in order to get into the top band. And if you do it well enough, you will easily get into that top band and you can easily achieve 12 marks, as long as you stick to exactly what the bullet points say and you don't veer off topic and include any unnecessary information. 
Hopefully now you'll feel a little bit more confident answering these types of questions.